You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello and welcome to All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral, with me, Steve Sidwell, and of course, Joe Curl. Now, joining us today is a man I started my professional career with at Highbury. Uh, I've seen him not only crash his own cars, but crash the <laughs> Arsenal first team bus, uh, sell ticket stubs at Highbury to opposing fans, and slice his ear off playing against Barcelona at the uh, at the new Camp. Um, he was part of the incredible Arsenal Invincibles, played over 300 career games, and is now head of academy goalkeeping at Watford. He is hands down the funniest man in football. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because this is going to be brilliant. It is the one and only Graham Stack. Stacky, Welcome. how are you, mate? Uh, very how good. You, very good. Yeah. Well, how are you, mate? Introduction, by the way. Well, can we do that again? I like that. And it's Good. one take. <laughs> <laughs> one take Sidwell, they call him. No, that was great. One take Sidwell. Uh, listen, Stacky, let's jump straight into it. I mean, I've, yeah. I've, I've skimmed over some stories there, but let's let's kick off with the uh, the Arsenal first team bus, mate, because that is a belter. Yeah, well, it was... Um, I know you've team. I used to, I used to stay in Diggs because I, I was brought yeah. up in West London and uh, my parents had a pub in Hounslow. Um, so for obvious reasons, the club weren't sort of best pleased with me sort of being in and around that sort of environment day in, day out. So um, I went off to Diggs and Oakwood uh, and there used to be uh, a minibus, well, a coach that used to go to Highbury, pick all the North London boys up, South London boys. They used to get the training, get off at Arsenal, jump on the coach. And then on the way to the training ground at London Colney, they'd stop off at, um, at Oakwood to pick the boys that were in Diggs up. So we used to get on the, on the coach every morning, get into training and, uh, and we'd make our way in. And if you'd get in, it's a, it was a lively bus. There were some proper characters on there. And um, <laughs> the poor driver, Lawrence, at the time, I don't know how he handled like the group of boys that, we, that he had at the time because there were some proper lunatics on there. <laughs> and every now and again, it was like, no one ever wore their seat, but someone would be charging up and down the bus. There'd be papers going, there'd be bottles going, the lot. And every time you stood up, he used to have this thing where he used to just touch, touch the brake. And everyone had to sort of like fall forward and it would be like, wait. I just passed my driving test. I was one of the first. I was one of the oldest ones in my in my year group. Passed my test, give it a big and driving in Citroen Saxo. Um, <laughs> Which was the worst thing back in the day, Citroen yeah. Saxo. Two years free insurance. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so um, on the day, for for whatever reason, I hadn't I hadn't driven in or my dad probably bring me in from uh, from the pub, left the car at the digs or whatever it might have been. Um, and I said to Lo, I said, do us a favour. I said, look, I've just passed on that. I said, it'd be a laugh if you just let me drive the bus just down the drive. It's, yeah, it's, a big it's, hundred, drive, yeah. it's 100 foot the drive. There's no car, it's, there's yeah. no one anywhere. So yeah. you've got like carte blanche really to after you want down the drive. The bus is full. We're at the Arsenal training ground. We're on the same site as the first team. He said, Stacky, I can't. I said, come on, Lo. I said, just from here to there, please. He went, Stacky, I'll get the sack. I said, you won't get the sack. I said, no one's going to say nothing. I said, we're not going to grass. So he went, go on in. Just take us down the end of the drive. All the boys are going like that. Like, What's he doing? <laughs> so I've got down the fit. Bearing in mind, I've done the, the steering wheels. It's, it's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's massive. I'm like that underneath the steering wheel, trying to look <laughs> over the top of it. So Lawrence is standing up next to me. I think, right, here we go. I've been waiting for this for a while. <laughs> So it was like, it was, the bus is so heavy. But I didn't want to go flat out. So I'm sort of like just tickling the accelerator, thinking how fast can this go? All of a sudden, I've gone, right, here we go. So I've just put my foot down on it and the coach is moving. And I thought, right, get ready, low. I've just gone crunch next minute. Well, look, low is flown head first. Massive window screen, crunched, windows all been done. There's about 50 shatters in it. Lawrence is down the bottom where you get on the bus and walk up down the staircase. He's got down, the alarm's going off on the bus. I don't know what's happened to the, the alarm's going off. Lawrence has come up, he's got his glasses were like that. <laughs> he had a cut on his eye, it was coming down there like that. All the boys are in stitches. And then I've panicked, tried to put it in park. I put it in reverse. Now we're going backwards. And I'm going, oh my God, someone help me out. Stop the bus, he's got up. Everyone was in stitches, but Lawrence, bless him, he was shaking like a leaf and he was trying to get back behind the wheel. Yeah, yeah. But where he's obviously, he's just nearly lost his life, he's not ready to get behind the wheel. I've come back to the back of the bus. The boys are just like, raw. they think it's blinding. <laughs> I think I'm getting sacked. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to get the sack. I've just done, I've, I've nearly killed the geezer. But that was the sort of thing I used to do, like with, with tickets and stuff. That was regular, wasn't it? All that was, time. listen, I, I, I used to sell tickets in a pub 
Yeah, and there was a fella that used to have a he used to have a stall at Highbury. Mick the Ticket, his name is funny <laughs> enough. And um, I've known Mick for years. He's a family friend, and um, we used to get our tickets like comps and that before like the, the week leading up to the game. And I used to say like I take a cup, and they'd say like how much? I'd say like it's fifty fifty pound for a pair and all that. Yeah, like. That's, I'm getting like one as a pair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm doing my week, I've doubled my week's wages yeah, in a pair of tickets. Yeah. I'd have 20 pairs. Yeah, yeah. Like you do the maths as a 16, 17 year old yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. I was nicking fortunes out of it. And uh, I used to um, I used to get all the tickets off the boys. I used to get to Highbury early on a match day. I used to go to the, t I used to go to Mick Stall, I used to do the scarfs and the flags and all that. And I used to give him 20 briefs and he used to give me readies, strap yeah. away, like that, yeah, top yeah, yeah. And um, that was that was normal, and then I would cut final tickets. They'd be like fifteen hundred yeah. quid a pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'd get my one. I said, "I'll give you a tour for them." Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boys, yeah, yeah. the boys are buzzing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't use them. We didn't use yeah, them really. Yeah, yeah. We didn't use them unless unless we had friends and family that wanted to go. Yeah. But but they would always tend to tend to come to me and and sell them. But but on this particular day, we were um, we were playing Liverpool, weren't we? Yeah. The first team were playing Liverpool, and um, we used to, we used to sit together. As, a, as an academy, like as uh, as apprentices, and and the old hybrid used to have to walk down the so First of all, you have to go through the marble steps. Yeah, that's like, notorious, and it? it's like world yeah. famous. That yeah, it's like the most beautiful entrance of a football stadium, historic everything that you, yeah. you could walk in. And there used to be guards on the door and stuff like that. So it weren't even like one of them. It were like you had to be either a player or someone of serious importance to be able to mm. sort of come through these marble steps. And we used to walk down a we used to walk down the tunnel before the players used to come out. We used to take our seats past the dugouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, sit in our seats, watch the game, and then at half time, we'd go and get like a we'd go and get a burger from outside the stadium, have hot chocolate, have, do whatever, have a chat and a and a gym wagon, blah blah blah. And on, on this particular day, we were playing Liverpool. It was a Premier League game. We were playing Liverpool, and uh, we we're outside, probably seven eight handed, having a burger and that, and. Uh, there's this guy, so he's walking up the road. I kid you not, he went from curb to curb. <laughs> and, um, oh my God, this geezer's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna stack it in a minute, there's no doubt. He said, you got, you got a ticket, pal, you got a ticket. I'm like, ticket, it's half time. I said, me, yeah, I've got a ticket. So, I've given my paddock ticket. Yeah. Thinking, there's no way this pisshead is getting in the marble steps. Like, yeah. you've got to be serious to get in there. Yeah, yeah. He said, where's the seat and all that power? I said, hold on. I said, it's it's money. He went, how much? I said, well, look, it's fifty quid. Yeah, it's fifty quid for the ticket. I'm thinking this is money for old rope. He's no way he's getting in the stadium. Yeah, I'm gonna send him as far away from Ivory as I possibly can, <laughs> and hopefully by the time he finds his way back, the game will be over. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. hope he ain't waiting for me outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've sent him around the houses. Walked, in, uh, got back in the stadium. The boys, like, yeah, that's... some of them went. That's a top move. Some of them yeah. went. That's a liberty. And I thought, well, do you know what it is? <laughs> oh, I'm saying it was a liberty. Yeah, I think you probably were. <laughs> oh, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So we're sitting down watching a game, and I was like on the front row of the paddock. Arsenal oh, Wenger's giving it that one. He's going like that, and Gerard Leo, wherever he was, is giving that one. Next one, I've looked down. I've gone like, this is Gaucho. Down, he's come down the tunnel. He's down. He's walked down the tunnel. He's in between the two dugouts. Of the, of the, <laughs> you've it's got tight, isn't it's tight. Yeah, tight. Yeah, it's tight. I remember. And you've got to walk past the managers to get in the paddock. Yeah. And I'm going, no, 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 no. It's, it's on top. I'm like, it's on top. I'm gonna get. Do you know what I remember best specifically from that one? I remember him standing there, and hey, Pat me... Rice oh. was looking around him. To, like, to look on the pitch, to bark instructions onto the pitch. And this fellow's just looking he's around. He's trying to like, talk to the winger, but this guy says, he's, this guy says in the way. Uh, but he's giving it this one, he's walked out. And it was almost like one of them. Give it like the free six. I can't 60. believe it, he's out of he his mind. He's can't. thinking, this is the best bullseye I've ever spent. <laughs> I've got pitch side at Ivory, <laughs> Liverpool. How are my pals going to believe me? Down the pub and I go back to Liverpool. I was pitch side, I was in between the dugouts. They're not going to have it. <laughs> so I'm going, oh, so I'm thinking, someone sling this geezer out. So these two stewards, I've come up to him almost like saying, like, what are you doing? And he's like, mate, I've got a paddock ticket. Yeah. They've gone, what? <laughs> like, how'd you get that? He said, my pal give it to us. Like, but in the paddock, there's no seats left. 
because we've taken up. He's got my ticket. Yeah. It's my seat. <laughs> so they've escorted this geezer into the paddock, yeah, and there's no seats. I'm going like that. Mm. I'm off on the floor because I know this geezer's got to sit yeah, down. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. he's got nowhere to sit. Yeah. So I've got this geezer in, he's sitting down, Liam Brady is looking at me, he knows, <laughs> he knows it's me, he knows it's me. I said, look, come and sit in there, I've got this geezer by the jacket, I'm saying, don't move, I said, stay where you are, don't you dare stand up, right? Yeah, 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 good seats, isn't they? You're in good seats, isn't they? I think, no, mate. So as the game's going on, the boys are Throwing Maltesers at him and M and M's and all that, <laughs> trying to wind him up, and I'm going like, boys. I said, you're, f- you're going to kill me. Do you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. I said, like, don't, don't do that. I said, like, seriously, I need your tears in my eyes. I like, know Liam's on me, and uh, we're watching the game. He's been well behaved for 20 minutes. I think and then Liverpool have had a shot from 30 yards in at the bar. This geese just flown up like a jack in a box. He's like, now I said, f- get back down here. Pull the geese back down. I said, I've told you, don't move. Anyway, game's nearly coming to an end. I'm just thinking, get, get this geezer away from me. So I said to the geezer, look, come with me. We'll walk back down the paddock. So we're walking down the paddock. Game's done. We're walking. And as you go down the tunnel, I be there's like a gaff called Halfway House. Yeah, so yeah, no, like yeah. where the media and that used to yeah, sit yeah. in there. And you st- if you, they needed a couple of questions or a quick interview or your team. Yeah, that little, be. just on the side. Yeah, 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 just down there. So I'm walking past, and I think someone from the, like the, the, the club press said, like, Stacky, you got a couple of minutes. Yeah, no problem. I said, yeah. I said to this fella, I said, look, wait here. Don't go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sweet. So I've walked in. Cut the questions, done that. Come back up. It's <laughs> gone. The geezer's gone. I'm thinking, <laughs> no. Hopefully it's been slung out. So I've got back down to the marble steps so to meet the boys. We used to get the train back together. Next minute, this geezer's in. He's like, ah, he's got two security on him. The scouser. He's taken it. He's been down the front. He's trying to get in the changing rooms. This geezer, he wants to go and meet the Liverpool players. Right? I kid you not. He had two security on him. And he's going, it's him. Like, he's my pal. And he's pointing at me. And they're going, do you know this geezer? I went, f off. I said, I don't know him. I said, get him out of here. So he got this dead. Eventually, they've just escorted this geezer out. And I've, I, said, I kid you not, I had a major panic. And I know again, Typical me, Akin Liam Brady, Monday morning, he's going to rip my head off. And he pulled me and he said, look, what was that about at the weekend, Stacky? I don't even think you asked anyone who had done it. He just, yeah, he he just that looked straight to you. He said, Stacky, he said, what? He said, what happened at the weekend, mate? I said, what, Liam? I said, like, I'm not going to, like, bullshit. I said, like, I sold this kid a ticket at half time thinking that he ain't going to get in the marble steps. Yeah. And I said, he's just so happened, like, got in. Yeah. I said, I don't know what to say, like... I only apologise. He went stacky. He went just don't do it again. Yeah. And then and then that was that put to bed. So, yeah. do, you, do you think because you sort of owned it, like I didn't try and lie. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what you say to your kids, didn't you? Yeah. Your kids yeah. Yeah. Said, yeah. I'll ask you yeah. once more. And, and then they'll. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I, it, it, I think that's probably the best policy. I yeah. Think you got to be honest. Listen. Yeah. We ain't perfect. I've made loads of mistakes. You know what I mean? But as I say, things like that. But I just done that one to get a ball's eye, but two, yeah. I wanted to make the boys laugh a little bit, yeah, not yeah, thinking yeah. about the consequences. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there are, there are consequences, and so there should be. But no one got it, so it was alright. Liam, Liam was good to you then, Stacky. Yeah. Liam was quality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Liam was a strong character. Like Liam was a real. He ruled with the iron fist a little bit, yeah. Liam. I, I nearly. When it. I when remember I the game. It was. It was, it was I like remember it was the game. West Ham or Arsenal for me, and it was because of Liam. Because obviously I'm from Camden Town. Aren't yeah. So, and and obviously Arsenal's Arsenal. But um, I really like Liam Brady. Yeah, top, top geezer, isn't he? I yeah. remember the game you played in. I, I, I remember the pitch because obviously we still train at the training ground, yeah, yeah. which is mad that I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. because obviously everyone sort of knew you were anyone in and around London knew knew Joel Co was because it was just like it was yeah. just like no tourist as a young as a young player. And I remember you coming on trial and you hear things, and then I was just like. God, like, used to look at I've never he, seen the double step like, over. Is that him? He done the double. <laughs> he's done the double <laughs> step over. Drag chop. Sent the geezer down the shop. I'm going. This kid's. We were just learning how to pass it with the outside of our foot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And he's sitting people down, and I'm going, wow, this kid's special. But but no, Liam was quality. Yeah, I like Liam. I like Liam. Listen, what a, what a player. You know yeah. what I mean? You only hear things yeah. now. He joined yeah. in train. He was he was class. Mm. Well, he he was as long as I saw was was proud when you made your debut. That's what I want to go on to next. Yeah. That really mm. happened. So we're going to go back to a moment in your career. We all know more about it. So yeah. I want to go back to your debut for Arsenal because, I mean, 
That's a, it's a debut of dreams. Ah, oh, listen, it's like, I talk about it now, I get like, the hair stand up on my neck, I get that mad tingling mm. sensation. So obviously, coming football, it's like, listen, it was our dream, wasn't it? From yeah, the yeah, get-go, yeah. it was all we ever wanted to do. Uh, and playing for such an unbelievable club like Arsenal, like, I loved it there as a kid, loved it. And my dream was to, to represent Arsenal and play in the first team. Didn't matter what game, yeah. Playing at Ivory was like that's that's that yeah. was that was the be all and end all for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Walking out there, um, at some stage in my career was gonna be yeah. was gonna be something special. And it sort of come a little bit earlier than I expected, really. And um still living in the pub, and it was like I think there was about two hundred people, friends and family that have gone to the game, and we we're playing Rotherham and it was in the League Cup. And uh How old was you, Stacky? So I think I was maybe nineteen. Yeah, I Amazing. think it was about yeah about nineteen. I made funny enough. I made Sex Sesc Fabregas made his debut in the same game. Yeah, and he was only sixteen. Oh. Um, Edu played in it and World Tour. It was like we we didn't roll out the big hitters, but yeah. we still yeah. had a strong side. Team, you know what yeah. I mean? And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it was it was a big day for me. And obviously, as the game's gone on, I think we're we're winning one nil till till pretty late on, and I've done really well. I've had a good game. Yeah, I've had yeah. a really good game, and I was thinking, what a great start, you know what I mean? Yeah. Debut, clean sheet, had a good game. Like into the next round, buzzing. Two minutes before the end, Darren Byfield. It was late on. Darren Byfield scored an equaliser. My heart sunk. I was thinking, no extra time. Like, I just want to hang on. And then as the game went on, I'm thinking, oh, tight. We could have pens on the cards here. Yeah. So I'm not thinking, I don't want us to score. But I just <laughs> you want to face because I yes. yeah, I want to go pens now. Yeah. Because yeah. in my head, I think I don't want us to score because it just get. Do you, do you think goalkeepers about... the only position on the pitch where when he gets extra time, I, I'd be like, please, no pens. Yeah. No. Mm. Goalkeeper, you want to get the only position up. on the pitch. Yeah. Wanna, yeah. I do get that. I do get that. But as a goalie, that's my that, that's, that's my moment. Yeah. Right, that's my yeah. that's my stage. That's where I can is, really. Is that all goalies or do some goalies not? I'd be I'd be fascinated if goalies said they didn't like a penalty shootout. I'd be that, that I, I wouldn't get that. Really? I couldn't understand that mindset. Because that's 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 your opportunity. Yeah. That's your opportunity yeah, to be yeah. a star, isn't it? And then it come round, we, we we've gone to extra time and I'm thinking, right, I'm thinking, just things are going on in my head. I'm not thinking I'm gonna take one, I'm just thinking I'm gonna be a hero, I'm gonna save a couple here and be a hero. Yeah. And I don't like mentioning the score because it went on for quite a while. But it just so happens it come round because we had, I think someone went off late on injured uh, and they had someone sent off during the game. I think I'd saved the second or third penalty. I think I'd tip one of them onto the post. So I'd saved a couple of penalties and then I think we we missed one or we put a couple wide, blah, blah, blah. And then like, I've got that one from like the centre circle. Like, okay, it's like you. I'm, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, like I missed this, we're out. Kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. And I thought, but listen, I backed myself to yeah, take a yeah, penalty. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm no shrinking violet. But it was like, it was the stand, and I just remember it's mad. My mate was in. The, my mate was about two rows in, and uh, I remember during a penalty shootout, he was like Stacky. My mate boy, he was like Stacky. He said, "Listen, he said you can do this and all that." And yeah, I, yeah. Like, I know my, I know my family and friends are in there. Was, and was just, this at the clock end or the North Bank? Either one, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, it's still this, brilliant. This was the clock end. This was the so clock even yeah. iconic. Yeah. yeah, this was the clock end, and uh, no, it wasn't. It was the North Bank. It was, right. like, it was the North Bank, and um, so I just remember putting the ball down, and I just. I, I used to I used to take I'd taken pens and I played I played yeah. the city out on pitch and stuff like that, and I just and I just put the ball down. I just my dad always said to me, just said pick your spot, yeah. and commit to it. Yeah, and I just went lovely job done. So I've hit this penalty. I it sweet as a nut, flown in the side net and job done. And then they miss the next one. And then Sylvan Wiltord come, he's picked me up. I've got a picture in the house on the yeah. wall. But he's picked me up. All the players have run and jumped. Or so, and I thought... That's like a like, film game. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a movie. Yeah. If you scripted that in the film, they'd go, oh, too corny. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, too, yeah, yeah. Like, too cheesy. But that was what had happened. It was like scoring and saving a penalty on my debut in front in front of all my family and friends yeah. in, a, like, in a full house and had a good game. It was like... After that, I might as well have just chucked it because yeah. I just ain't, I ain't got no. better than that ever since. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just quickly, what was the feeling like or the difference between being in goal, saving pins, yeah. to then having to walk yeah. to take I, one? I think there's less... Are you nervous? Nah, I, no, I do get nervous. I wouldn't say I don't get nervous. I do get nervous, but I think... 
because you're a goalie, the expectation, the expectation is he's probably going to stick this one over. <laughs> yeah. isn't it? That's probably what yeah. people think yeah. because he's he's not, not. They never used to be as cultured as what they are now, yeah. but he's probably going to try and smash it as hard as he can, and yeah. he's going to stick it over. So there's probably a little bit less pressure yeah, as a yeah, goalie yeah. to take one. Um, but I felt confident. I felt confident. Did you ever play in a game at Highbury in the uh, in that Premier League Cup final where it went to penalties? No, no. I, see, I remember. Five all Upton Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't play in that. I... Funny enough, she played that. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't play in that. He got dropped. I, I played did, in the I next one. I didn't one. play that. Uh, that was. Um... I didn't play Bobby Steve, Stephen Bobby. That, that, that was a game. Bobby Red threw his top. Was that gone out. Game, yeah, it? that was a game. Oh, that library. And I remember being in goal, and like I'll never forget when Jay done that. I just remember everyone going, "Oh, <laughs> like imagine that yeah. the whole stadium yeah, went, yeah. oh." And yeah, I was like, yeah. "Oh, that's naughty." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that went to penalties, and I took a penalty in that as well. Yeah. Yeah, so someone, someone has said to me in the past that you're the only goalkeeper ever to score two penalties at Ivory, which it ain't much of a record, but it's Mate, nice to have it in the bank, isn't it? Fast forward a little bit. I want to go yeah. to Barnet. Yeah. Because I want to talk about your uh, your player manager, Edgar Davids. Yeah. Um, tell us tell us what it was like playing with him and playing under him. Yeah, do you know what? when he, uh, You hear the rumours and that, like we're... Listen, at, at the time, Mark Robson had, had signed us and we didn't win in 13 games. It was like an awful start. We were like rock bottom. Is that Mark Robson from West Ham? Yeah. And I love Robbo, Kenny yeah, Jacket. Yeah, yeah. Love him. Good people, really yeah. good people, good coaches. But we just didn't have a great side. Yeah. Or we just weren't performing for whatever reason. And you hear rumours around the training ground. They said, like, I've had a good Davidges. He's got a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a good Davidges. You're taking a piss. What? A good Davidges? Yeah. Yeah, all right. I've walked out the out of the canteen, there's this Bentley driving down. And I've just seen this fella, dreadlocks in and all that. I'm going, nah, it can't be. <laughs> so Edgar Davids has turned up, so I'm thinking, f like, he's... What, what league was you in? At this we time? was in, uh, we was in League Two. So League Two, Edgar We were in Davis, League Two. Uh, rocking up. Yeah, we were in League Two, we were in a dogfight and we needed something to happen. We, need, we needed a change. And he's come in and I'm thinking, wow, I'm, all, I'm in awe. Like, he was one of my first champ manager, it was him and Seedorf. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They yeah, were the go-to, yeah. do you know what I mean? And what he had done and what he had won was, like, pretty untouchable at the time. Yeah. He was he was top stuff. But I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to it because I think yeah. I thought he would challenge yeah. me. I thought it's, it is the expectation and the standards yeah. were yeah. going to be the top, which yeah. is what I want. Yeah. Um, and he come in and... Uh, I, like it, it was hard because he had probably never been involved with a group that was not as talented or not mm. as gifted or not as te technically or tactically yeah, aware. Yeah. So he's trying to deliver stuff and I could see he was getting frustrated. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. could see. Yeah. So he wants things. It's it's not just passed in there. It's like wrapped in. Yeah. And he would nail people. Yeah. Like badly nail people. And some people can handle it. Some people couldn't handle it, um, and I don't think it, it, with respect. I don't think he knew who I was. Like that, yeah. Edgar Davis knew who I was. Yeah. I don't think he knew that I'd had a pretty decent career up until that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my history of Arsenal and a number of championship clubs and that. So he was like, he was the way he used to talk to people. He used to talk to me a little bit like that. Yeah. And he used to. We used to have to call him Mister. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the. But listen. Hold on a minute. So he's your manager. Yeah. Your playing manager. Playing you've got manager. To call him Mister. No, but that, um, that's common in Italy, isn't it? That's um, listen, Ran Ranieri. Ranieri. Listen, oh, I don't mind that. Okay, so that's a culture listen, thing. Culture thing, thing. Yeah. I'll call you Gaffer. I'll but call if you, you go boss. to another country, maybe you go. Yeah. What do they usually call the manager? Okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But I had listen. He's my manager. Mm. But I respect him. Yeah. If that's what he wants to be called. I'll call you that. You know, mm. that's no problem. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't ashamed yeah. by that. And let's have it right. From what he's achieved, I think rightly so. But. um so yeah, he used to talk to me like, not undermine me, but it was sometimes to be a bit disrespectful. And I almost had to say, listen, I'm a f***ing idiot. Like, I've played the f***ing game. Yeah. And, and then it just happens that he's like, hold on, who's this sort of like half mm. sticking up for himself? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. no one's ever done that. No, yeah. well, no one's ever answered me back. Yeah. And then he probably said, oh, you play for Arsenal, huh? You play for Arsenal? I said, yeah. Said, ah, you know Dennis? I said, yeah. So now he knows I'm not a Muppet. Yeah. Now he knows I played a little bit. So after that, it was a completely different tone yeah. and demeanour with me and him. He made me club captain. Yeah. I, got, I signed a three and a half year deal at Barnet, which is like, that's unheard of. Yeah, right? in league. But I was at league two and we yeah. were basically in a relegation battle and I knew we were in a dogfight, yeah. but I loved it there. 
I yeah, loved it. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I, lo- I love playing for Barnet and being captain. It was proud. I was proud. Yeah. And um, it, so he come in and uh, and to be fair, we got when he come in, he used to play. He used to play, and he was and he was brilliant. He was mm. brilliant when he played. He was brilliant. It didn't matter. I, initially, this was it didn't yeah. matter who he played. He would be there. He'd do it properly. It, that training was brilliant. Yeah. But as time went on, we actually got relegated that season. Right. Yeah, another brilliant memory when Edgar Davis was there. We, we, we had to win. We had to beat Wickham. It was the last ever game at Underhill. Last right. ever game. And this, this, was, this was another special day in my career. And we were winning one year. We had to win. They got a penalty in the 91st minute against Wickham. Mm, yeah. And I had, to, I had to save it to basically win the game to <clears> give myself <throat> a chance of staying up. And I saved the penalty. And then we went into the last game having to get result at Northampton. And I'll never forget, I, f- I think we were drawing nil nil, and Edgar Davids was on his phone at half time. And I'm no. thinking, fucking what is going no, on? No, like, this is, it might not change his life, yeah, but yeah. it's going to change mine. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, is he, on, is, he, is he on the same page as us lot here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, I, I didn't want to make a deal of it because we needed to go and win a game of football. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So we just sort of, it just sort of let, let it happen and it was and it was done and, and and we eventually lost the game and and after that it was a bit of a when like there was a bit of a change in him when we got relegated yeah. national league he ain't got a clue who Halifax are he don't know what we're playing yeah. at Barrett but who are they he ain't got a clue so he ended up sort of off being double cash he'd turn up like some days he wouldn't train and he would drive his Bentley down the path and park it behind the goal. I used to have the cappuccino and the cross on and just watch training. I'm out in the freezing cold rain, diving around like a lunatic and the gaffer would be sat in his motor. And I used to think that's what, what, just... What do you think his motivation was, Stacey, for it, taking that job? Because do you know what Because like, if you're going to take a job yeah, like that, yeah. you've got to commit to it. He, listen, initially he did and he was brilliant. It, with yeah. the form we had, we would have got the playoffs. <clears throat> right. From when he came in. Yeah. But I think he probably lost sight of what his end game, what his end goal was, and why he was there. Yeah. And I think there was more to it. I think there was a big publicity push yeah. when he came in. Yeah. Um, I also think there was potentially some financial motivation from the club because I think they felt as though they could have gone into different avenues to to generate some money for the club. Yeah. Um, I don't think that happened in the end. Uh, but we used to play. It was funny. Uh, we played away at Gateshead. And the gaffer's not travelled, so I said, gaffer's not well. <laughs> so I didn't mind it when he didn't play, because you'd sort of like get around each other yeah. and you would still you you'd still find a way to get results. Yeah. Sometimes you'd probably play even better. Yeah. And my mates phoned me Alan Dunn. And said, Stacky, you got a game I said, Yeah, yeah. He said, Where are you? I said, I'm in Gay said. He went, f off. He said, Edgar Davids is in a Mayfair having a drink. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? <laughs> the gaffer has pulled like the sick one, he's uptown. I'm thinking, like, liberties, like we've just done. A six and a half hour coach journey, yeah. Yeah. and he's gone. Not for me. Like no thanks. And I just thought, well, that that, that don't sit right either. Because yeah, 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 you, yeah. your gaffer, he should be, he should travel everywhere with you. I would, yeah, no matter yeah, what yeah, level I'm playing at. It's, it's, it's all of us. Yeah, yeah. Or none yeah. of us. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. It ain't like that. And then, I, and then after that, it was just like I think a few of the boys. And he got sent off three times in about six games. Then he was turning up. He was, he was wearing what he wanted on the dugout. He was trying to promote his own like. His dress wear and all that. What, what did you What did you think when he took the number one shirt? Because he wore the number one. Yeah, shirt, he didn't did. He? So to be was that fair at the start to him, or not? That, yeah, no, that was when he first came in. It was. It wasn't straight away, but it was within weeks. Now, the the, the previous season, I'd won a number of awards for like Player of the Year and stuff like that, along with David Stevens. And then um, I wore number twenty six. And then the following season, team photos and all that. And Edgar, Edgar Davids has sat down with me. I'm in. The, I'm in the canteen having a coffee and that and he went stack it he went quick man he said what number do you like I said I said I don't give a I said it's just a number I said I've worn plenty yeah uh, I said it don't bother me he said I'd like to wear number one I said no problem <laughs> I said no problem I said you can wear what you like I said you're the manager I said crack on are you sure I said yeah of course I'm sure I yeah. said I'll wear 26 I said yeah. I don't wear it a bit last season I said I'll wear it again this season yeah. he went okay no problem so I'll give him a number one jersey, but I'm thinking he doesn't know what's coming and what punters are going to think. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Playing in the National League, mm. like wearing number one, it's just, 
it just don't look good. He just yeah. doesn't need to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why would he do that? He's yeah. like a David. Just wear elephant wear wear eight. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that was in that was in that 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 was in pretty sound up. Listen, I, I do like him. I do like yeah. him. I really like him. He he was he was setting his ways a little bit, which yeah. looking back, he probably would have done things differently. Yeah. But what's he what's he up to now? He, he does. He... I think he's a Juve ambassador. He's yeah. got his own football clothing label called Monta. He yeah. does a lot of shows and. Uh, yeah. But he's not. He's not being. A, he's not a manager. Nah. I nah. see him. I see him the other night. He's in the Mayfair. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't have minded if it had asked me to come. <laughs> yeah. It made me get a gay shed. <laughs> uh, right, listen, let's get on to some Premier League chat. Frank Lampard's Everton, they face Leeds on Saturday. Not the great result mm. that he wanted to in the league uh, against Newcastle. Joe, we, 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 we sort of punished for Frank to get the yeah. job. Do you think he's the, he's the man yeah, to really get him going? Definitely, Sid. We had a chat about it last night. And, and like, uh, like, it's a bad result against Newcastle. But in fairness... That's probably the worst time to go and play Newcastle. Yeah. All of them signings, yeah. the St James's Park would have been rocking. You know, you play New if you play Newcastle two weeks ago, it's a completely different game. But that's by the by for me. I think Frank taking that job is a great move for Frank because you're never going to get a better chance to take Everton because you've still got an owner who's committed to the club and wants to spend money. The fans hated the last manager. So whoever walks through the door, that's going to come with a massive upside. Yeah. The players are underperforming, like they are good players. They've got some good players. And also, you, you, you've, still got, you've still got Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin. I think they've got levels to go up. They've been injured for a while. So I think it's a great... It'll definitely keep them up. I have yeah. no doubt. They, we put them in the graphic last night about them being in a relegation battle. I think give Frank a couple of weeks, results will start to turn. Yeah. He'll be fine. And I think next year... New stadium as well coming. I think he's, I think it's a match made in So just in yeah. stabilise stabilise yeah. his season and... Yes. Yeah, They'll get enough points to stay up, and then and then next season I think you'll see him, him really go to work, and I think I think the owner will back him as well. Yeah, and then forget like I think the problem with Everton. Like, I don't know what you boys think, but the problem with Everton it was been the signings, some mm. of the signings like some the of the money, money they've spent. It won't ages, be. It? it was on Arsenal's bench mm. for twenty odd mid. Like yeah. wow, like some of them have been incredible. Just a quick one on on Everton then Deli Ali and Van der Beek. Do you, yeah. they've got sort of a point to prove? Yeah. Do you think? I mean, Delhi wasn't great. Delhi didn't. I mean, you got to hit the ground running. But yeah, Frank, Look, Frank. If anyone can get it out of him, surely Frank. Yeah. Again, again for Delhi. If, you know, if you're gonna, if you, if Delhi, I think Delhi has gone away. We've talked about it before. Mm. We said like, I think Delhi's gone away from what he is as a player. Yeah. Like that's the like with just a bit of self awareness from Delhi Ali. He needs to look at Thomas Muller. He needs to get back to what he was running, running into channels, holding the ball up, laying it off, getting in the box, scoring. He's a box footballer. And he, he sort of, I don't know who's, who's around him, who's talking to him. Like, I've watched him at Tottenham. He kept coming deeper and deeper, like trying to do, you know, rolling the ball, trying mm. to be a playmaker. It's not him. No. So Frank, I think, if Frank's telling him, and I'm sure Frank will be sitting there saying, we need to get you back to doing what he does best, scoring goals, timing your runs in the box. Yeah. I know there's no one better than no. Frank. So he can't, Deli Ali can't stand in front of Frank at any point. When Frank's giving him that information and it and it not resonate, it not mm. sit in with him. So yep. I think Frank will get the best out of Delhi, but I think Delhi needs to be a, be open to accepting the criticism because if Frank can't get the best out of Delhi, nobody can. Uh, Man United they host Southampton uh, mm. on the weekend. Not a great week for them in terms of FA Cup. Barra yeah. Burnley not a great result as well. They, they need to start getting some results. Yeah, well, listen, well, Man United's a mess, a yeah. complete mess. Um, like, even from the appointment from Ralph Rangnick, you, you're bringing a manager in to steady the ship who's managed... He's managed 80 times mm. in the last 10 years. He's never managed a club like Man United. Um, with all of them... All of them egos, you know, Bruno Fernandes, Pogba, Cavani, Ronaldo, Rashford, you know, the young players, like... It needed someone with a st with a steadier hand coming in. I mean, I would have I would have left it with Carrick to the end of the season, and then really gone and you know, he's not the answer, rang it. Like yeah. he's, I've watched him three times since he's taken over. He's kept talking about this high pressing yeah. game. Yeah. Like, I ain't seen none of it. No. Like, they're the same as what they was, apart from a little bit more disjointed because he's upset in the apple cart. Yeah, I, yeah. I was going to say that. So he. <laughs> De Gea is still as busy as ever, isn't he? I mean, they're trying. They're saying about pressing from the front. How impressive are you been with De Gea again this season yeah. for them? He's been different class, I've got to say. He's, mm. had, he's had some wobbles. He's lost a bit of confidence at times. But listen, I've always said the cream comes to the top. And, mm. and to be fair, it was just a matter of time before 
before he got back and Robin started playing the way he is. Listen, mm. he's he's reliable. He's still making saves. I'm not being funny. They could have probably lost far more games. Yeah, yeah. He's kept them in games yeah. and he's won and he's won in games at times. Um, and he's massive for them. But I, I, I echo what Joe said in terms of trying to manage that group at the minute for someone to come in who doesn't really know the league mm. or the players or the history of the football club. Yeah, I think it was a big ask for him to come yeah. in and change yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, like looking like think think about it, like. Like they got Jose de Sack, didn't they? The group of players, um, Ole. Like well, I think Ole from the outside, he seems like the perfect man manager. He's like a nice guy, you know. So you've gone from Jose, who's going to tell you what time it is, and, and then you've got Ole, who seems to be from the the other end of the spectrum, who might be a bit more. But what do they want these group, the group of players, yeah, yeah. you know? And now you hear you know mutterings from out of there that they're not happy with Rangnick. Well, what? Well, you know, there's always that one. They need to look in the mirror. Mm. You know, your man, you. Your Manchester United players, by name, like the, the great history of the club, the great players, but it's but they're not performing. But like, Joe, you, they, you, they, you must have played for managers that you haven't seen eye to eye with. Yeah. But you've gone out and you've still performed. Exactly. And as a, as a group of players, you roll your sleeves up and you go, "Yeah, don't worry about him. Yeah, we got to think about them, and we got to think about ourselves, and we want to yeah. get results and win stuff. Yeah. So let's put him to bed and let's just let's, yeah. let's start churning out some performances. Yeah. And I don't think they've done that. Are they looking for a get out and some excuses? I don't know. It seems weak for a group that's got so many characters and personalities. Yeah. For me, they got to be the drivers. Yeah. These big personalities. The name you've mentioned. The names yeah. you've mentioned. They should be the ones going. Yeah. Don't worry about him. We ain't doing enough. Yeah. Let's pull it together and let's start getting results because they ain't doing it. That's spot on. That's absolutely spot on. A, a team that's only won once all season, Burnley. Mm. They got a, you know, a draw against yeah. United. Uh, they face Liverpool Sunday. Do you think this is the season that they eventually go down? They, they've been dangling their legs I do. They, for the last few seasons. Do you think this is the one? I do, Sidian. And you can trace it back to, you know, when they had the investment coming in at Burnley and, you know, Sean, Sean Dyche, who's been, you know, such an under underappreciated manager keeping that group of players in like you know so when you, the new owners there's there's mutterings of a change of style and a change of this and a change of that like, that was a dangerous talk back then for them Burnley players you know Daishi still he stayed on he could have left yep. you know he stayed on um, they haven't in, invested they haven't got be better of, of what they've got they've stuck with what they've got but you know once you start hearing things like that and, and heads get turned whether it be the manager or the players, it becomes very difficult yeah. for the group. So, you know, if, if they do go down, I would put I would put no finger of blame at Sean Dyche. I, I, I'd, I'd say they, they haven't managed that sort of the new owners coming mm. in. You know, what what are Burnley now? One yeah. short, two years ago, you knew what Burnley were. We'd be sitting here going, Burnley will get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Burnley will get out of it. But now you're like, well, maybe not. Yeah. Right, well, let's give you some Coral odds. If you think Everton will beat Leeds 3-0, Coral will give you odds of 20 to 1. It's 25 to 1 if you think Southampton will come from behind to win Old Trafford. Uh, and Coral will also give you odds of 25 to 1 if you think Burnley can nick a 1-0 home win against Liverpool on Sunday. So, Right, it's the Coral uh, Super Series. Uh, it's Leicester versus West yeah. Ham. Uh, that's the pick for the game this week. They go head-to-head -head on Sunday at 4.30. So I want to ask you... Quick fire questions. I want some quick fire yeah. answers, okay? Uh, so, Leicester at home to West Ham. Who will win the match? West Ham. Uh, Leicester, 1 0. <laughs> Can you not do that? <laughs> you can't be done. So, I've got Leicester and 1 0. Can you not do right. that? So, I've got odds for that. Joe, West Ham. Stacky, Leicester. Draw. Draw. <laughs> draw. <laughs> right, what will score? who will score first? Uh, Jared Bowen. Bowen for West Ham. Who will score first? Madison. <laughs> <laughs> How many corners would there be in the game? Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with eleven. We go with eleven again. Yeah. Yeah. Normally around nine, isn't it? Nine. Yeah. Okay. An and how many? Partner. How many players will get carded in this game? Two. West the West Ham. Two. Two cards. Two Four. cards. Four. Okay. Uh, people at home, remember you can play as well. Just head over to coral.co.uk. Answer questions correctly to win cash prizes. But Joe. Please gamble responsibly. Or always, you always do. There you go. Um, Stacky, listen, that's a wrap, mate. It's uh, it's been an absolute pleasure, pleasure having you on. Can um, I? Can, sorry, can I just say, Sid? Like, whenever you, there's not many characters in football where you, yeah. speak, anyone you speak to about Stacky, there's only there's only love. There's only positive. Everyone loves him, mm. and it's. I've enjoyed this. Listen, one of my favourite. Uh, when we finally got him on, yeah. it, we've always looked forward to it. The, 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 I remember when I signed for Chelsea, and. 
the first day we had the flight to LA. Yeah. And uh, the boys are like, straight away, like, like obviously you was there, you had JT, Lampsy, Bridgie, all the English lads were like, Sidious, yeah, tell us a, <laughs> tell us a story <laughs> from the state. <laughs> like he was famous up and down the country, <laughs> yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? And then even the boys then, like they knew him. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. listen, it's been brilliant. Stacky, I've got to say, mate, you've got to do a book. Yes. I know yeah. everyone said it and I know you want to do it. It's so mad, you know what? I publishers just, out there, yeah. writers, anyone, yeah. Stacky, you've got was, to do one. Listen, I, I, I've had this conversation. So the, my best mate, he passed away years ago and uh, he was an Arsenal through and through. He yeah. was Arsenal. Ian Wright was his hero. And when he passed away, I thought, right, what can I give his daughter? Something special, just, yeah. to, just to, as a keepsake. So I phoned Wrighty up. Um, I got his number off Bradley, who I played with. I said, Brad's going to give the old man a call. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, phone him up. So I phoned up Wright. I said, listen, I said, right, I need a favour. I hate asking for favours. Yeah. But he said, Stacky. I said, whatever you want. He said, what do you want? I said, have you got like a shirt or something that, that yeah. I can just give to his daughter in memory of, of her dad? Yeah. He went, like, he said, I've got something special for you, Stacky. I went, all right, lovely. So he gave me this sort of white T-shirt, half a skull in diamonds and half of Wrighty's face. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like with a with a message on it. He signed it, Adrian. Uh, rest in peace. God bless your family. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Love. I was like that. Wow. Yeah. I said right. Love it. I said. I said. Do you want to send it? He said nah. He said I'll come and meet you. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. South Moon Services. I'm there early. I'm like <laughs> right. He's coming. I'm like right. yeah. he's a legend, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a man. So I thought I'd get a coffee. I wanted a beer, but I thought. It looks, it looks terrible. Right, it's coming in. I'm on the piss. <laughs> <laughs> so right, he's walked in. Do you want a drink? I said, I've got a coffee. He said, what? He said, do you want a drink or not? I said, you have him one. He went, yeah. I said, I'll have one then. Yeah. So I sat down with Righty for about two hours. I must have had about six pints, seven pints. He went, listen, he was in M MK Dons at the time. He was working with the Fools. He went, Stacky, he went, your name comes up every other day. He yeah. said, I'm hearing things. He went, now listen, he said, I've had a career. And I don't, I listen, I've never claimed to have a career that, that these lads have had, never yeah. played in the World Cup, I've only dreamed of playing in World Cups and stuff like that. But I'm pretty happy with how it turned out for me. Yeah. And I have got loads of stories. I've yeah. got hundreds of stories. And, and right, he said to me, listen, he said, you've got to write a book. Yeah. And I said, F off, right? I said, you're being serious. He went, you've got to write a book. He yeah. said, you know why? He said, because your normal punter, your yeah. normal footballer, up and down the country, yeah. would love it because they could definitely relate to some yeah, of the stuff you yeah, say yeah, and some yeah, of the yeah, stuff yeah. you do. And I started doing it on my notes. Yeah. Started doing it on my notes, started making notes. Every time I thought was saying or someone had mentioned something, I put it on my phone. And um, and I lost my phone. I lost my phone. Yeah. And I had loads of stuff on there. So to be fair, I've started doing it again. Good. I've yeah. got like Good. A, a document yeah. at home and I've just started throwing loads of stuff into it. So listen, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, look. This has been brilliant. Thank you ever so much for coming on. Joe, pleasure as always. Uh, remember to find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcast from. You have been listening to the All To Play For podcast brought to you by Joe and Coral. We've absolutely loved it. We hope you have as well. You've been watching All To Play For brought to you by Joe and Coral.